I'm going to talk about optimizing the value of your prototypes using 3D printing with sex toys as a case study. My name is Janet Lieberman, and I make sex toys. Um, but before I made sex toys, I designed 3D printers using a fleet of 3D printers. I actually, that was my first job out of school at Z Corp, and then I did that again recently at MakerBot as a mechanical lead for the Replicator Mini. So I would call myself a 3D printing native. From my first day of working on the job, I never learned a different way to do it. I'm like the kid with the iPad, you know, the toddler. Um, I take them for granted, they're integrated into how I think about the design process. I don't put them on a pedestal or think that they're the solution to everything. Um, and I put a lower value on each individual prototype, usually. I'm also pretty technology agnostic. Uh, I don't think that you need one of everything, but I think that if you really understand how they work, they work better together. Um, and my own personal home fleet has two different technologies. It has SLA and FDM. And I can't stress enough, if you want to use 3D, if you want to prototype, having the importance of having a home fleet. If you can test your designs as soon as you're done making them, then you lose that time that goes, oh, oh yeah, that's fun. You lose that time that goes into uh, sending out for prints. Because if you're sending out for prints, you lose time every time, and you're missing a lot of the point of 3D printing, which is to think about how to make your prototypes as valuable as possible. You have the time that you go that goes into designing, making, planning your prototype, as well as the resources. And you're balancing that against what you can learn from the prototypes. So if you do them quickly, you don't need to learn that much. So this is Eva, uh, a clitoral stimulator that tucks into the labia. Uh, it's out of the way for penetration uh, because it's a couple's vibrator. And it's composed of silicone, medical grade silicone, around a plastic frame underneath. Um, and the geometry is pretty tricky. This spring force is pretty tricky. Um, materiality is really important in sex toys in general. Uh, so in developing it, I think of prototypes as four different categories. Three that help you answer specific questions. Sketch models, looks like prototypes, works like prototypes. And the last one, alphas and betas, that are the combination of what you learned from the first three. So the idea behind a sketch model is that you are trying to get to testing as quickly as possible. Rather than theorizing or wondering, you're just testing. You go make a ton of prototypes that minimize variance so they lower design time, and then you thoughtfully compare even though they're not perfect. So we made a lot of different PLA, this is just some of the examples, PLA wings when we we're trying to develop these wings. Um, and even though PLA has entirely the wrong materiality, we could compare them against each other and still learn something. And we also tried using hips, which is a different material that would have been closer to what we wanted in production, but it broke too easily. But we put like a dollar and an hour into it, so it really didn't matter. It was still worthwhile. Uh, second type would be looks like prototypes. Looks like prototypes are models where you are trying to figure out how the outside envelope is going to work before you know what the insides are going to be. So industrial design explorations are a very obvious one. Another kind of looks like prototype that we used in development was one that was field tested but didn't vibrate, um, so to speak. Uh, and uh, we used 3D printed molds to be able to test out how silicone over molding would work very early in the process. Um, while using a mix of 3D printed and machined parts so we could get really representative wings at a lower cost. Uh, works like models mean that you just slap everything functionally that you need together in one prototype and see what happens. Uh, they tend to look horrific. These ones are a mix of 3D printed bodies with machined wings because the machine's wings were flat. They're very easy to make. We tried 3D printing everything, but it ended up all warped. It was with a different technology, not one we had in-house. We didn't lose much. Um, so all that information goes together into being able to make alphas and betas that are as close to production as humanly possible in performance, usage, materials, appearance, so you can get real testing data before you go into production. And any details that are different, you need to know and you need to be tracking as you look at your results. And you think that at this point, 3D printing would be kind of out of the equation, but uh, we used 3D printed molds to be able to use the same silicone we would use in production in order while producing in our office and making prototypes there. So keep the prototype stakes low and use quantity to find quality. Try a lot of different things quickly, fail often, and then you still make progress and really spend your money when you know what you're doing. <laughs>